Hello everybody in YouTube land. Welcome back. This is Junie. I'm coming back with my ugly stick tackle bag. Today I'm going to show you what I carry inside of it. This is going to be for my 20, the year 2023. So this is my updated bag for this year. And so I got this bag about a year ago and it has been doing very well. The thing that I like about the bag is that it has a nice rubberized bottom, as you can see there. So it keeps the moisture from the ground from getting into your bag. So if you're a bank fisherman, that may be very important to you, especially as much as you spend on your gear inside, you want to try to keep it safe. Another feature about the bag that's nice, it comes with this padded handle here. And that's nice because if you're carrying your bag a long ways, it's comfortable. Also, it comes with a padded shoulder strap as well. I've noticed some of the newer bags are coming with one or the other, but not both. Have you noticed that or is that just me? looking at the bags in my local area. And the back here, you get this large mesh pocket. So what I do is I store my rag here because you don't want to get into your tackle bag if your hands are slimy and messy. So I always put your rag out. Well, I put my rag out here because of that and some gloves. And I also have a fish grip. Now this one is for um, catfish, but I put it in here because this is just something that I can hold the fish and weigh them with. Uh, because sometimes you get fish that are kind of sickly looking and you don't really want to touch them. So you can easily pull them out with that and weigh them if you want and put them back into the water. The material on this is very nice. I've been caught out in, t in a couple rainstorms because in the Chicagoland area it's windy and it rains and it's cold. This bag has held up. As you can see I've got some stains from using it and <laughs> I've got to clean it up a little bit. But this uh, pocket here, and you notice how I can just open the zippers up like that with just one hand. You can do that with all the zippers on this bag. And if you have arthritis or something that's really nice or stiff hands, or if your hands are dirty and you just want to use your clean hand to try to get into your tackle bag. This right here is a six by two pocket. So you can put all kinds of stuff in there, clippers, uh, keys, whatever you want, money, your ID, whatever. That's what that's for. And then uh, I like the top because it kind of acts like a rain fly because it can go over the bag to help repel the rain off the other stuff on the inside. So let's open it up. Let's right there, really easy to open. So these are the four trays that it comes with. But before we get into that, let's get into the side over here. It becomes with these little Molly type straps. I have my suntan lotion, a jar bait of trout right there, um, band-aids, some hand wipes, uh, some Excedrin, some bug spray. I always try to be um, make sure I have my bug spray and suntan lotion no matter what. Over here I have a couple more jar baits on this side. Hopefully you can see that. And um, I just have some gulp alive and some crappie baits. And then on the inside of there, um, let's see, what do I have? on this. This is my Gary Yamamoto uh, creature type bait. I love this bait. It's really hard to find this cinnamon purple, but this is fantastic in my area. As you can see, it's an older bait, but they last. Like this lasts forever. <laughs> um, I throw those all the time and that's my last bag of those. And I can't seem to find that color anymore. Uh, this right here is my panfish magnet kit. So and this works for all sorts of fish. And then I have um, some of these power baits that I got on clearance last year that I'm going to be using this year. So I'm going to try that out. I like to try different stuff. Um, so this is my bag. And uh, so here it is. Here's the front pocket. Let's open this up. Let's show you what this looks like. From inside, you get two little pouches and you get this thing to hold keys. I put my... Uh, line cutter on there. I also keep a whistle in there. You never know if there's going to be a medical emergency or something. And I've actually found somebody in the woods one time that they were either having a stroke or a heart attack. Something was going on. I couldn't carry them out, but I had my whistle. I was able to get other people to come over to the area. Um, right here's a small set of uh, hemostats for bluegill and all that and trout or fish with small mouths. I like to use those. Um, I have a precision screwdriver to work on my reel if I needed to, some clippers, a fish scale, and I also keep um, another scale in here as well. So that's what I keep in that pocket. Then in this front zipper pocket, I keep some bobbers 
and my wacky rig tool. So that's there. Cause you never know, sometimes, you know, you might go fishing and you might go for one thing and then you notice that other fish are really biting of a different species. So that's why I keep a little bit of everything in this bag. And then on the front, I have my pliers and my other hemostats. And I like that it comes with this little pouch so you can hook it onto your belt or your pocket. If you don't want to take the bag, you can leave this on shore if you're walking along the shore fishing. So let's go ahead and get into the bag. And again, this bottom is nice because it keeps the bag sitting upright as well. It doesn't fall over on you. If you buy some of the cheaper bags, you know what I'm talking about, that they'll fall over if you pull out the stuff out. And I'll show you what this bag looks like when I pull the trays out. So right here is my panfish crappie. This is just anything. I can catch trout, anything with this. These right here are my panther martins. I love panther martins. Um, those are probably one of the best spinners out on the market. I like MEPS too, but I don't have any MEPS in here. Uh, this right here is my blue fox spinners. I love these. Love these. I carry extra of these because of the kids, when we go trout fishing or if we're just out fishing, they lose a lot of these. So I always have a ton of those. And you get like, I believe like six or seven of these for like five or six bucks. Um, I think they've raised the price to about $7 now maybe. I think every Walmart's different because I've been to some Walmarts, they're still like five eighty. Then I go to other Walmarts, they're like $7.80. So I think it just depends on where you live. Rooster tails, bait holder hooks, some snap swivels, some split shots. And then I also have some uh, stoppers for bobbers, um, weedless hooks. This year I'm gonna try this, which is a jig head with a weedless. I've never tried one of those, so I'm gonna try that this year. I have some bobber stops. I also have this blue fox here. Um, it's a gold one. I'm gonna try that this year. That just looks like something that might work. I've got some spoons and just all kinds of stuff in here. Panfish hooks, um, just anything that you need. Underspins, marabous. So there's that one. Here's the hard baits. And so right here, we have the red-eyed shad. I love this crankbait. I also love the rattle trap too. This is a Bill Lewis rattle trap. This right here is my wake bait. This is um, a KVD one. I had a square bill in here, but I think one of the kids may have that in their tackle bag. So and I also have some of these mini baits. I love these little mini baits. Uh, we do like to do micro fishing. So we have some uh, other ones here too. So yeah, so that's a crappie one right there. And I've got a silver one of that as well. That works really good on crappie in our area. So I'm gonna, and these are sticky hooks, like they get you. Uh, this right here, believe it or not, this little cotton cordell one, this little, white one right here. I love this bait. I can't find this one anymore, so I don't know if they stopped making it or what I have to do to get this. But this tiny little one is fire. This is so on, like where I live. This thing is fire every year since I've gotten this bait. It just, it gets a hold of bass, bluegill, little baby catfish. I've even caught trout on this. It, it just catches everything. Uh, this one right here is a crappie bait. And I have that in gold and silver, and then a rebel. Uh, this right here is an Ozark Trail frog. I wanted to try those out. I've got a popper one and a one that I can pull through the weeds. Then I have a KVD sexy frog. So I got that. So there's that. Um, right here. I have a storm bait. This is a cotton cordell bait. And then I love this one. I think this might be, oh, what is it? A salamander by the salamander company. I'm not for sure, but I love this bait. That's an awesome lure. Uh, right here is my Zara puppy. I love this one. This is a nice topwater one. Had that one for years. Uh, this one right here is a nice one. I believe this is my Rebel Topwater one, this black and silver one right there. 
There's a little popper. I had a, a larger one of this, but I think one of the kids either has it or I lost it. Uh, right here is a hula popper. This is nice. And this one right here, the chug bug. I think that's what that's called, but uh, this is very nice. I love that lure. I really take good care of my stuff. I try to clean them up. If I need to, I put fresh hooks on them or whatever. Uh, right here is my rebel bait. I love my rebels. Um, I grew up using rebels because that was always what was in my grandfather's tackle bag. So when I would get his stuff, it'd be like rebel lures, man bait, stuff like that. So this is one of my favorites. And then these right here, I believe are KVD jerk baits. I'm almost for sure. Either that or Rapala. Let me see. Can't really read it. Oh, Rapala. They're both Rapala. Excuse me. But I have some KVD ones that kind of look very similar to them. So these are the Rapala baits. And I really like the Rapala baits because they suspend very well. And then I got some that can sink. Um, if you haven't used the Rapala brand, um, you might want to give them a shot on at least one bait. You don't have to buy a ton of baits, but if you're going to buy one, I would recommend them because you can basically find them just about at any Walmart you go to. Um, they're very easy to find in my area. Right here's my jigs. Right here I have some of these uh, Walmart um, buzz baits. We just bought these this year. So... We got spinner baits and buzz baits. We just bought these this year because we lost a lot of them last year. Uh, the kids love throwing these. So I always make sure I just buy like the cheaper ones. That way if they lose them, it's not that big of a deal. And I got them in just different colors. Right here's some chatter baits, um, just football head jigs, um, a grub, or a, not a grub, uh, what do you call it? Craw bug. Uh, I love these. Peanut butter jelly is my favorite. This is my green pumpkin. I just, you know, I love throwing these jigs. They're just, they just work good. They go through the weeds well. Um, got some white ones too that I can deal with. And then um, just some like grub type stuff. I just love these. They just work really good in my area. So we have those. And let me see, I believe there's one more box. This right here is my terminal tackle box. What I did is I went to Walmart and I bought a large Eagle Claw kit that came with all this tackle. And it was like 190 some pieces, I believe. And I got it for $9 and it came with all of this. And it went up to five aught in the extra wide gap um, bass hooks, which is very nice. Plus you get the weighted hooks, you get the worm hooks, you get the wide gap and extra wide gap. You also get drop shots plus drop shot, um, uh, hooks. Then you get warm weights. You also get some snap swivels and swivels. You get the beads. What I added in here were some of these Ned rigs. Oh, you also get the um, bobber stops with them. But I added some Ned rigs to this and some shaky heads and wobble heads. I just like using those because sometimes this, you just need these. So, but other than that, that's what I have in here. So, but uh, if you could like and subscribe to my channel. That's what I'm carrying this year. And let me show you this bag, why I like this bag. See how it stands up, it doesn't cave in. So it, it keeps its shape, that's a good thing too. And plus I was caught out in a really bad uh, rainstorm last year and it was cold because if you live in the Chicagoland area, you know how windy it can get and the wind can pick your stuff up and knock it over where I live because it's just so powerful and um, so that's why this tackle bag is awesome. And plus that rubber bottom down here, it keeps a lot of moisture out of the bag. And if you're looking just for a nice gift for somebody or if you're new to fishing, you might wanna take a look at this bag. I know you can get some cheaper bags from like Walmart and stuff, which I have a couple of those bags and, um, and there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, if you're gonna buy expensive gear, try to make sure that you keep the bottom safe because not all tackle bags come with that hard bottom. So let me just show you this bag. This right here is a tackle bag that I have given to my family member 
we, we all actually use the tackle bag, so it's not just one person's bag. As you can see, it's like, this is more like a vinyl there, but it only covers it just here. It doesn't cover the sides of this bag. So like if there's water on the ground, you're, you're gonna get moisture in the bag sooner or later. You just have to make sure you either keep it on your shoulder or try to keep it up on the bank or something. On this one, I don't really have to worry about it. If there is some water, that bottom is gonna keep the water out. Other than that, if you could, please like and subscribe to the channel, I'd appreciate it. This is Junie and you have a blessed and nice day, I guess. See you soon, bye-bye.